Hello, welcome to tutorial 71 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In this video, let's talk about k-means, what it is, how we can use it for clustering, and especially how we can use it to segment an image. So first of all, k-means is an unsupervised machine learning technique. It's, uh, which means we are not going to give the algorithm some labeled data, and we are going to let it figure out how to sort this data into n number of clusters. So the only thing that we are going to tell the algorithm is how many clusters do we want the data to be divided into. And uh, of course, like I just mentioned, the user defines these target number of clusters. And the means in the term k means, k stands for the number of, cl number of clusters, and the means refers to the averaging of the data okay, that it does to find the right centroid. So if you have like a, a bunch of data and you're like, okay, I want to divide this into three clusters. So it's going to do this averaging of data to find these uh, centroids. Now, I think it's better understood if you look at this in a visual way. Let's say this is our ground truth. We have the data spread this way, but then if you just look at the data, it just looks like all these yellow points, right? I mean, this is the ground truth, which means you do not know. Uh, I mean, this is the answer. How does it get to this answer if all you have is just these yellow data points? Well, first, it randomly assigns the three centers. So in this case, our k equals to three. So it randomly assigns uh, these three uh, points. Now, in this example, as you can clearly see, this is actual real data, yeah, where it identified these three as the centers. Now, if I change the random state to something else, maybe all three would be like right around here. A different random state, meaning when you initiate or initialize this in a random way, the centers could be anywhere because this is completely random. But once the centers are assigned, then it looks at the, uh, I think graphically, you can see it here. So it looks at the average between these two. The average between these two is this line, right, that goes through the center. So it kind of draws a line right around there. And then the average between this data point and that data point is somewhere around here. And similarly, the uh, average between the blue star and this red star is kind of somewhere around here. So it draws these lines to separate them. Well, it doesn't draw the lines, but it separates these into three clusters. This is after initial uh, iteration. Now it takes multiple iterations for it to converge. Meaning, whenever we say an algorithm converts, that means, okay, you keep changing things, but uh, the result doesn't change much. The result is within accepted uh, uh, you know, limit. So the next step is, okay, so now that we divided this, it looks at the center of all of this data and then moves the, uh, moves the centroid to whatever the position that represents the centroid of this data. Same thing with this and same thing with this cluster. So the centroids are updated Okay, and then go, this, this happens over and over until the result doesn't change or until the number of iterations have reached. So this is, uh, I think, very simple to understand and also very, very simple to implement. So let's jump into our spider IDE and have a quick look. So let's clear off everything from our last execution and start with a clean slate. Okay. So uh, again, let's. Uh, I've created a Excel file with some random numbers that shows the you know three clusters. So let's go ahead and import our pandas again, the library that we use for data handling and matplotlib uh, for uh, plotting. So let's uh, go ahead and run those two lines, uh, and then let's capture our Excel, the data that we have in Excel, into a data frame, a pandas data frame, and you can go ahead and print out the head. And as you can see, this is just. In fact, I can open, I have 149. Let me actually zoom on to the right hand side so it's a bit easy for you to see. And uh, if we open this data frame, I have 149 data points or rows and two columns, column one and two. The column one is going from one through whatever and column two, uh, column Y has some numbers in it. Now, let's plot and have a quick look at how it looks. So let me open the plots and you can see the data right there. It, it's pretty evident that one cluster appears to be right down here and this could be one cluster. So if your k equals to two, my guess is there'll be a cluster down here, another cluster right there. If k equals to three, 
one here, maybe one here and one there, right? So that's what we see. Let's see how the computer sees it. Okay, so first of all, k-means is also part of scikit-learn, uh, except in uh, cluster, okay? So from scikit-learn, dot cluster, import k-means. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. And again, k-means is available in multiple uh, libraries, but again, I try to stick with scikit-learn for most of the machine learning, unless I move on to deep learning, in which case, obviously, you move on to Keras and TensorFlow and PyTorch if you want. Okay, so scikit-learn uh, dot cluster, import k-means. Once you do that, again, uh, I initiate my k-means by uh, you know just calling the k-means and then defining the number. First, let's start with number of clusters equals to two. Okay, this is our k. And then initialize, like uh, how do you want to initialize your uh, centroids? And how many iterations, maximum 300? This type of problem should converge pretty quickly, but image segmentations and these things can take uh, quite a while. And if I slide this all the way to the right, you see that the random state equals to 42. And this random state is basically, again, if I change that, then the centroids that it assigns would be somewhere else. Uh, so let's go ahead and instantiate this. And this k-means is just an object. Now we need to fit it. This is very similar to how we have done our logistic regression, linear regression, so nothing different except we are just using k-means in this case. And we are going to fit uh, the k-means to data frame here, and our data frame has only x and y. If our data frame has uh, multiple columns, I would have actually done what I've done in the last couple of videos, which is, okay, what is my X and what is my Y, right? So you separate your X, you separate your Y, and you also hold out some of the data for uh, testing, and you can do all of that. I'm just showing the basic implementation right here. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do the fit. It should be almost instantaneous. And now let's go ahead and predict it on the values itself in this case, right? So because we are trying to segment or we are trying to cluster uh, the data that we have into two clusters. Okay, so let's go ahead and predict it. Well, it's all done. So if you look at the variable explorer, you can see that, okay, it's done predicting, and it predicted this into multiple classes, class one, class zero, and there should be class two somewhere. Oh, we are only doing two in this case, so zero and one. Let's plot the values. Again, I'll share the code so you know how to do this yourself. But uh, all I'm trying to do uh, here is just basically plot these and assign them uh, appropriate colors based on what cluster or what value belongs to them, right? I mean, if they're zero, I'm coloring them in uh, one color and the centers, I'm coloring them in black. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot these three and have a quick look at the plots. And you see the center for this cluster is up there, center for this cluster. So in fact, if I only do k equals to two, this entire thing is one cluster, that is a different cluster. That doesn't look that great because naturally, I think in this data set, there are three of these. So k-means is going to do what you tell it to do. That's pretty much it. So if you say number of clusters equals to two, it's going to divide that into two, whether that's right or wrong. So let's go ahead and change this to number of clusters uh, three and run these lines again. And hopefully we should see much better separation. And as you can see, there is one cluster here with the center right there, another cluster and the third cluster right here. So this is how easy it is to use k-means. Now, when would you use k-means? Well, if you want to find patterns in your data, of course, k-means would be amazing, right? I mean, that's what we are trying to do. Going back to our original interest of image processing, how does k-means apply to our image processing? Well, let's uh, clear everything here and try to segment an image using k-means. So how do we do that? Let's clear this again. And uh, now let's get to the bottom part of this code. First of all, let's import our scikit image and numpy and matplotlib. Again, these are for plotting, handling the data, and scikit image to read an, uh, to read an image, right? Now let's assign a variable uh, img for this bsc.tiff, and I said as gray equals to false, which means it's uh, read it as uh, a RGB channel image, so we should have three channels. So let's go ahead and read it, and as you can see up here, my image is 653 by 734 by three, and the three stands for, of course, RGB image. Let's go ahead and have a quick look at the image. Oh, sorry, have a quick look at the image, and there you go, okay? So by looking at the image, we can say at least there are one, two, three, and possibly four, right? I'm in the dark region and may even be five. So let's just do four, or k equals to four in this case, okay? And an image is, is, is uh, just a bunch of numbers. So if I open this, 
and let's look at right there it's just a bunch of numbers that go between 0 to 255 well because this is an 8-bit image so we just need to find clusters and if you go back to the image this bright region probably has a pixel uh, about 250 the dark pixels here are probably close to zero, like 20, 30, 40 or something. The light gray is probably around 200 and this dark gray is probably around 100, right? So we can visually see that, okay, these are different regions, so the values are different. So k-means can be a good algorithm to separate these. So let's go down. So first of all, uh, k-means just takes a whole bunch of numbers and finds patterns in it. So let's uh, go ahead and reshape our image because our image is in x y and channels let's just combine our x and y because we just need pixel values so let's go ahead and reshape it so it's nothing but 653 multiplied by 734 so that's what we are seeing here so that many numbers and three channels once we have that again same k means uh, let's go ahead and import it from scikit-learn and now let's actually put number of clusters equals to four other than that everything else is exactly the same as we have done above okay and then go ahead and predict it on the image itself. So let's go ahead and uh, as you'll see, this will take a little bit of time. Now it's done. Okay, so it's done. And if you look at the predicted values, it's uh, again, 479,302, but we need to recast it into the original shape, which is 653 by 734. So we know how to do that. All we need to do is dot reshape, right? Reshape into what shape? Reshape into our original image with X, and original image with y in fact i think the first one is y and the next one is x i mean horizontal and vertical so i'm uh, reshaping it and let's go ahead and have a look at it using i am show and there you go so that's your segmented image so this is your original image this is your segmented image and we have segmented that using k-means and k-means uh, of course this is for demonstration purpose as you can see around the borders there seem to be some ambiguous pixels which is misclassified as this white region, apparently. So uh, let's actually have a quick look at this with a C map equals to gray. That would be a bit more intuitive than a color image. Okay, so there is your segmented image. That looks very good, actually. That's an amazing, amazing job of segmentation. Previously, I was trying to read too much into this, but even the edges are pretty nice. So this is a relatively easy sample for segmentation, but go ahead and try it on your own samples. So hopefully you learned what k-means is and what its strengths are, and you'll find out what the weaknesses are if you work on a bit more complicated images because uh, right around the edges or if your image actually has some texture, those textural regions may not be correctly segmented because this doesn't take into account the texture of uh, individual regions. For that, we need uh, other type of machine learning approaches, which we'll get to later on. So anyway, uh, let's move on to a different approach in our next uh, tutorial. Until then, again, please keep practicing and thank you very much.